Welcome to NCLEX Avenue course. It is a must to finish watching this video for a high chance of passing the exam. Questions from Archer Q Bank. The nurse is caring for a client receiving prescribed diltiazem. The client has the following tracing on the electrocardiogram shown in the exhibit. The nurse should perform which priority action? A. Discontinue the diltiazem infusion. B. Notify the primary healthcare physician. C. Assess the client's oxygen saturation and respiratory rate. D. Prepare a prescription of intravenous IV atropine. Answer. Choice A is correct. Explanation. The tracing shows sinus bradycardia. The priority action would be to discontinue the diltiazem, a calcium channel blocker that lowers heart rate. If the infusion were to continue, it would lower the heart rate further. Choices B and C are incorrect. The physician should be notified and oxygen saturation should be assessed. However, the priority action is to discontinue the offending agent first, the diltiazem. Choice D is incorrect. IV atropine is inappropriate as the offending agent, diltiazem, must be discontinued. Additional info. Diltiazem is a calcium channel blocker prescribed to treat hypertension and atrial fibrillation. When given continuously in an infusion, the nurse must closely monitor the client's blood pressure and heart rate. Diltiazem may cause dangerously low blood pressure and bradycardia. Other calcium channel blockers include amlodipine, nifedipine, and verapamil. Only verapamil and diltiazem lower both the blood pressure and heart rate. Question. You are reinforcing counseling for two parents that are preparing for the birth of their first child. The mother has sickle cell anemia. So, the father has decided to undergo genetic testing to determine if he is a carrier or not. He finds out that he is not a carrier. You tell them that their baby has what chance of having sickle cell anemia? A. 25%. B. 50%. C. 75%. D. 0%. Answer. Choice D is correct. Explanation. The baby has no chance, a 0% chance of having sickle cell anemia. Instead, the baby will be a carrier. Since the baby's mother has the disease, she is SS, and because the father has tested that he is not a carrier nor does he have the disease, he is SS. This means that the only combination possible for the baby is SS, carrier. Choice is incorrect. The baby does not have a 25% chance of having sickle cell anemia. Choice B is incorrect. The baby does not have a 50% chance of having sickle cell anemia. Choice C is incorrect. The baby does not have a 75% chance of having sickle cell anemia. Question. The nurse is teaching a group of students about contributing factors for delirium. The nurse is correct in identifying that delirium can be caused by. Select all that apply. A. Fever. B. Alzheimer's disease. C. Mild to moderate hyperglycemia. D. Vascular disease. E. Infection. Answer. Choice A and E are correct. Explanation. Delirium is an alteration in mental status that occurs abruptly. Delirium, unlike dementia, is reversible with treatment. Contributing factors for delirium include fever, hypoglycemia, and infection. Choice B is incorrect. Alzheimer's disease is a form of dementia, not delirium. Choice C is incorrect. Hypoglycemia is often associated with delirium, not hyperglycemia. Mild to moderate hyperglycemia does not cause delirium. However, severe hyperglycemia, blood glucose greater than 600 mg per deciliter, can cause a hyperosmolar state, non-kenotic hyperosmolar syndrome, which can result in altered mental status and coma. Choice D is incorrect. Vascular disease contributes to vascular dementia, not delirium. Delirium is an altered sensorium. It is characterized by acute changes in the patient's level of consciousness. Hyperactive delirium is characterized by agitation, restlessness, and emotional ability. Hypoactive delirium is characterized by flood effect apathy, lethargy, or decreased responsiveness. Many causes of delirium include medications, dexamethasin opioid toxicity, nicotine withdrawal, dehydration, uncontrolled pain, constipation, urinary retention, infection, hypoxia, renal failure, hyponatremia, hypercalcemia, hyperglycemia, and emotional distress. Initially, 
non-pharmacological interventions should be attempted to identify and address reversible etiology and relieve terminal agitation slash delirium. For example, address the reversible causes such as treating constipation or discontinuing medications, such as dexamethasin, modifying precipitating factors such as sensory, deprivation or uncontrolled pain, etc. If no rapidly reversible factors are identified or if the patient is terminal, dopamine antagonists must be used. Question. The nurse is caring for a client at risk of developing tumor lysis syndrome, TLS. Which of the following prescriptions would prevent TLS? A. Intravenous, IV, hydration. B. Broad-spectrum antibiotics. C. High-dose corticosteroids. D. Histamine 2 receptor antagonists. Answer. Choice is correct. Explanation. TLS is characterized by many tumor cells that are destroyed rapidly. This destruction causes an intracellular leakage of potassium and purines. Hydration is an effective way of preventing TLS because it causes dilutional effects in the serum. Choices B, C, and D are incorrect. Antibiotics are not effective in the prevention or management of TLS. The same applies to corticosteroids as both medications do not lyse tumors. Histamine 2 receptor antagonists, such as famotidine, are not utilized in the management of TLS as they have no impact on the syndrome. Additional info. TLS is characterized by intracellular contents and subsequent cellular byproducts of damaged cancer cells are released into the bloodstream faster than the body can eliminate them. TLS can cause life-threatening electrolyte imbalances such as hyperkalemia, hyperphosphatemia, hyperuricemia, and hypocalcemia. TLS may be a positive sign that the tumor responds to antineoplastic treatment. Common cancers likely to cause TLS include acute leukemia, small cell lung cancer, melanoma, and multiple myeloma. A key intervention for the nurse is educating the client about drinking at least 3 to 5 liters of water daily. Medications used for TLS include allopurinol, which may decrease the uric acid secreted by the list cancer cell. This syndrome, if left untreated, may lead to dangerously high potassium levels and an acute kidney injury. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and watch playlist for more videos.